Okay. If you have any question during the presentation, please use the chat window. Then uh, I will answer. Uh, Oh, okay, uh, let me start. Uh, as you know, MIDAS Gen is general purpose to structural analysis and design system. So, using MIDAS Gen, uh, we can perform analysis for the high end analysis as well as the uh, simple static analysis and we can perform the design for the frame design, steel structure, RC structure, and SRC structure. And also for the plate elements, we can perform slab and wall designs as well. We have the, a lot of uh, international design code, as you can see in this slide, uh, including Eurocode, American Standard, British, Indian, and so on. And also we have newly implemented capacity design feature recently as per the Eurocode 8. And since the uh, MIDAS gen has been designed for building structures, we have very uh, uh, useful feature for apply the wind and seismic load. So by specifying the wind and seismic standards, we can simply enter the static wind and seismic load as per those standards. Also, MIDAS Gen has strong point for high-end specific functionality, including the 3D column shortening, deflecting changes in modulus, creep, and shrinkage. And also, we can perform the construction stage analysis, accounting for change in geometrics and supports and loading. Mm. The strong point uh, in construction stage is we can fully consider the time-dependent material during the construction stages. So it will give us more accurate construction stage results. And also we can perform high-end analysis uh, such as geometric nonlinear, material nonlinear, and dynamic analysis such as time history and response spectrum, and also base isolate and dampers we can consider. Also, we can fully consider the cardinal cable structures as well. Even though we uh, are considering the high-end analysis features, but most important thing in MIDAS gen is, is very easy to use. So we have intuitive user interface, such as works tree and task pane. We will see during the demonstration. Okay. So uh, I will show you the general procedure using the my dash chain. Okay, uh, in MIDAS gen, uh, we can import the DXF file. So I will import the DXF file first. So this line element has been generated without uh, properties. So I will generate the material and section properties first. We will use the European standard. Uh, as you can see here, we have the various database for the material and section database. Uh, we will use the European standards for this time. 
for the section also you can see the available section shapes and also the database which has been implemented in Gen. So we will use the European section database. Okay. Oh, as you can see in this window, all the entered data can be checked in these three menus. So using this box tree, we can reduce the modeling mistake. Also, from this box tree, drag and drop, we can freely use. From this uh, model, BIM has been generated, so using this uh, we will make the columns using the extrude function. Extrude from nodes to line elements. Specify the material and section property. 5 meter height. Right. So, from the nodes, the, we can see column has been generated. Uh, when we generate the beams and columns, we use the importing DXF file, also extrude from the nodes to line elements. And this time, uh, when we generate the elements, we can simply click two points. So for the brace, uh, I will make the, using this feature, specify the section and material property first. By simply clicking two points, the elements can be generated. Okay, so first the storage element has been generated. Then since the, all the beam elements has the same section property, uh, I will change those properties using drag and drop from the works tree. Select the desired elements and drag and drop. So the color has been changed from blue to black. The blue represents the property which the element has not been assigned. So once we assign elements, it will be turned to black. Okay, so uh, section has been properly changed now. Uh, for the beam element, uh, building structure, uh, if we want to assign the beam and the release, we can assign it from the boundary condition. Beam and the release, and since this structure is the bracing system, so we will assign beam and the release for all the beams. Select beam elements. And apply. Once we assign beam and release, we can check it 
with this uh, green dots. Then now we will enter the roads. Before we enter each road, firstly we need to specify the static load case. In this static load case, we can see the various load type. This load type will be used during the when we generate the load combination. For the circuit, dead load, and point post dead load. and live load and wind load for x direction and for y direction so generated load case can be checked here then we will enter self wave first By simply entering minus 1 value, self weight can be automatically considered in the program. When the program calculates the self weight, it will use the weight ST, which can be checked in the material property. If you want to change uh, with your own value, you can use it with the none, and then you can change the specific values as well. Then we will enter the floor load. Uh, in the menu, you can see two different menu for the floor loads. Define floor loads type and assign floor loads. Firstly, we need to define the floor loads type. Specify the load case. For the live load, also we will enter. Then we will assign this floor load to the elements. Uh, when we assign the floor loads, we can also consider the sub-beams as well. So we can specify the number of sub-beams and also we can consider the self-weight of those sub-beams. And we can change the distribution method as one-way slab or two-way slab or so on. Then by specifying the areas, we can see the cell, uh, floor load is entered here. As you can see, the sub-beams has been considered with this line, and the cell plate of those sub-beams is entered as the concentrated load to the connected girders. And once we uh, specify the areas, that load is distributed to the connected beams and columns. Then using this model, uh, we will generate building. For the regular shape building, we have useful feature which is building generation. We can copy the prototype 
floor with specified number of floors. So we will copy four times. Then specify the height with the four meter. Then we can see the building has been generated here. The floor loads and all the uh, properties can be also copied when we generate buildings. Also the Pimander release has been copied as well. Mm. As you can see, this section property is not assigned yet because this section property will be used for the columns in third to fifth floors. So we will assign it now using the drag and drop. So section property has been assigned. Uh, uh, I just see the question that what if you want to change the direction of the south beams? The south beam direction uh, will be designed, determined based on the which point we have uh, started first. So when I assign the floor load, I started from this node to this way then sub beam will be generated like this way. So if you want to change the direction of sub beam, you can simply change the starting point. So if you change if you start with this point instead of this, then you can have this direction sub beam. Okay. Then uh, we will assign the boundary condition support, restrain the translation x, y, z. Then we will define the mass. Uh, in case of self-weight, it can be considered uh, using this feature. However, uh, in this building, we didn't model slabs. We considered it as uh, floors. So we can change those loads into mass using the load to mass feature. Model, mass, load to mass. So we will consider the point post dead load as a mess. Okay. Oh, entered mess can be checked in the story mess table. So if you see this table, you can check the total mess. And oh, we will also define the story data. In the building story, program can automatically generate the story as well based on the nodes in the Z direction. So we will use this. And also for this regular shape building, we can use floor diaphragm. So instead of model slabs, the floor will be considered as rigid. So rigid link will be assigned for each floor. That entered floor diaphragm can be checked here. So based on this floor diaphragm, uh, static wind and seismic load can be entered. 
So we can see the storage center in the Wind tab of story data. So wind load will be entered in the storage and each storage center. And in case of the seismic load, they will be entered in the best center for each story. Uh, also, if you have the ground levels, um, if you model the underground structure like the basement, you can specify the ground level. Here you can see the ground level. In this building it is uh, specified as zero since there is no basement structures, but if you have it, you can change it by entering this number. So the basement elements, we do not enter the static wind and seismic loads. Then we will enter the wind load. Uh, as I explained earlier, we have the various standard for the wind load and seismic load. As you can see, this database, we can specify the desired standards and specify the load case. We will enter the X direction wind load first. We can check the amount of the loads here with this table. Apply. Also Y direction as well. Okay. For the seismic loads, uh, we will use the response spectrum load. Firstly, we will generate the response spectrum function and then we will specify the load case. We can select the design spectrum based on those database. So we will use the European standards. If you want to consider your own design spectrum, you can simply enter them in this table as well. Using from the Excel file, you can simply enter those data using the Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Then specify the response spectrum load case. For this, firstly, we will enter the eigenvalue analysis data. Uh, we can select the model combination type uh, from this options and also we can restore signs as well. As you know, uh, when you perform the model analysis, uh, during the model combination side will be ignored, but uh, in the special case, we need to consider the signs. In the case, we can check on this option, then you can specify the method how to restore the signs along the major mode direction or along the absolute maximum value. Also, if you want to check only specific modes results, you can select only desired modes as well. So from this, we can reduce the analysis time. And also Y direction. Also, we can consider the accidental eccentricity. The based on the entered eccentricity ratio program can automatically 
uh, calculate the eccentricity, or we can manually specify the dimension as well. Then, uh, as, ex as I explained earlier, the specified load stating load case will be used during uh, generating load combination. So uh, we will generate load combinations for checking results and also for the designs. You can see the several tabs in load combination dialog. The general tab will be used only for the analysis and design tab will be used both for analysis results and design. Since we will also perform the steel design, we will generate combinations in the steel design tab. Click auto generation button, then specify the design code. Okay. So we can check the combinations for the strength check and also for the serviceability checks as well. Also, if we want to consider p-delta effect, we can consider it from this. Specify the number of iteration and enter the oh, Axial force, which will be used during calculating the second order effect. Okay. So, and we have entered all the required data, so now I will perform analysis. Okay, then you can check the, all the results. Uh, after, in the post-processing, the icon will be changed like this, and by right-clicking in the model view, we can see the, all the useful data can be simply uh, used from this context menu. Check the reaction first. The largest reaction will be displayed in the red arrows. And also all the results can be checked in the tables as well. By clicking this button, we can see the table results. And all the uh, table results can be exported to Excel file as well. And check the beam diagrams. Moment diagram and also shear forces. Also, here is one more useful function, PIM detail analysis. Uh, using this PIM detail analysis, we can check the uh, member forces and deformations and section stresses for desired location. So, uh, in case of the member force, results will be generated based on the five points. However, uh, using that 
feature, pin detail analysis. We can check the results for all the location of the beam. Also for the stress, we can check all the location stress as well. Okay. And we will check the mode shape. For each mode, we can check the mode shape in the model view. And also, if we go to the table, we can check the frequency and period in the table for each mode. Also, we can check the modal participation masses and eigenvectors as well. Okay, uh, then uh, now I will perform the design. The design related features can be checked under the design menu. For the steel design, firstly we will specify the design code. Following design codes are provided currently and we will use the European standards. Okay. And we can change the steel material properties and perform the design. Once we perform the design, we can check the design results in this results dialog with the member forces. If some members are displayed as NG, we can change it using the change features. The program can automatically find the satisfied sections. Uh, once we specify the limit between this value, then search. Then program will find the satisfied sections. So select desired section and click change and change. Then program will recalculate the design results. Also for the other section, find the satisfied section and change it. So you can see those sections is changed from NG to OK. So based this results uh, has been calculated based on the analysis results, which didn't reflect the, this changes section. So, in order to get the correct results, we need to change the, those changes section to analysis results as well. For this, by selecting those section and sending it to the before change, the program will recalculate analysis and design again so that we can get more accurate results.
Okay. Uh, this part is the. Uh, and when you perform the design, we can check the those results in the graphical report and detailed report. In the graphical report, we can check the member properties with the member force and the each item which have been verified in the program. Axial resistance, bending resistance, and combined, and shear resistance as well. Also, the detailed value can be checked in the detailed report. For its root combination, it shows the most critical member forces and classify the sec class of the section as per the Euro code 3. Then check the actual resistance. It also shows the standards we report to. And shear resistance, momentum resistance about the major and minor axis. Also, lateral torsional buckling check can be done. And combined resistance check. Also, the as you've seen during generating the load combination, we perform the serviceability checking as well. So we can check the deflection check results as well. Okay, so uh, those are main parts for the steel design. Uh, if we do not have further question, uh, we will move to the IC design part. Okay, the question, uh, what if we need to assign the separate diaphragm in one floor? Uh, we can consider it uh, using the rigid diaphragm uh, in the boundary condition. We also have the rigid link. Using this feature, we can assign the diaphragm for each part as well. Or normally for irregular shape of building, we may model the plane element for the slabs. So that can be also considered.
So this floor diaphragm can be used only for one diaphragm in one floor. So if you need to generate separate diaphragm, you can use the rigid link or we can model slabs using plate elements. Okay. Okay, so now we will move to the concrete design part. Uh, when we perform the steel design, uh, there was only one feature, steel codes check. But in case of concrete design, there is two different functions. One is concrete design and the other one is concrete code checking. So I will explain the difference between two first. Uh, as I uh, wrote in this slide, the concrete check can be done uh, after we assign levers. So when we perform design, we don't need to assign levers first. So program will uh, show you the recommended levers. Then using this design results, you can update lever, which means you will assign levers in each element based on the recommended design results. But in some case, you may need to change the levers which program recommended. So you can change those levers and then you need to verify if they are satisfied based on the code or not. So in that case, you will use the concrete code check function. Uh, I will perform both during the demonstration as well. Uh, this time, for the concrete design, we will perform strong column with beam design, which has been newly implemented in the new version, as per the Eurocode 8. The general concept of the strong column with beam design is, firstly, the beams will be firstly failure, then columns, and also Fractional failure will be done first before the shear failure. For those uh, general concepts, the we implemented the design forces as per the code, and also detailing for Levi's has been implemented as well. Mm. We will use this model.
So from this procedure, we will perform the capacity design. Firstly, the define We will check the member forces. So as you can see in this table, the, when we calculate the design moment of the columns, we will use the beam's resistance, which means the beam will be, beam's failure will, will be done first, then column will be failure. For the shear, the concept is similar. Mm. Uh, firstly, we need to specify the design code. The capacity design as per the Euro code can be uh, performed after we specify the Euro code 2. Because uh, Euro code A capacity design is the design feature for the high ductility and medium ductility design. And for the low ductility, pro um, code recommends that just to use the Euro code 2. So they are categorized in one design code. And we specify the doctorate class here. Also the gamma factor, which has been uh, considered in the code equation, can be changed as well. So this may be different based on the national annex of the Euro code for each country. So it can be changed to based on your desired value. Also, if you specify specific members as secondary seismic elements, program will not perform a capacity design for those members. So simple design as per the Euro code 2 will be performed for the secondary seismic elements. For this, uh, if you specify the element group first, then just, just to select those group, then program will consider them. Okay. Also before design, we can check the material data for concrete and levers. And also general uh, levers which will be used can be specified as well. So selected levers will be used during the automatic design in the program. Uh, if you want to change uh, to the other codes, as you can see, other codes is uh, marked as gray. So you cannot select those codes. If you want to change them, you can go to the preference and go to design. Then by changing the lever data here, for example, if you select uni to here, Mm -hmm. Then the corresponding Liba will be activated in the previous dialog. Uh, I will not change this time. Okay. After that, uh, we will perform the design. Uh, I previously generated load combinations. Similarly, uh, specify the design code and then program can 
automatically generate the root combinations. For the strength verification and also serviceability verification. Since it takes quite long time, so I will select only specific elements for performing design. Beam design. Then column design. Okay, so once we perform design, we can check the results. Uh, similarly, in the graphical results and also detailed reports. In case of columns, the program used the 3D PM interaction curve. So you can check the PM curve as well for the graphical reports. You can see the, as per the Eurocode 8, the design has been done. Also, for the strength verification and also detailing of the levers can be checked in the detailed report as well. For the moment verification and shear verification as well. So program will give you the recommended levers as well as the required levers. Then based on these results, we can update lever, which means the we can assign levers for those section. So select all and I will update levers. Okay, then we can check the assigned levers here. Also, if you want to change the number of levers or lever dimension, we can change it in this dialog for the main lever, also for the ties. For beams, the procedure is the same, so we can change the number of levers. For example, we can change it. I'll try to change it as four, two. And click Add Replace. Then I will perform the checking. If there is no selected elements, program will perform design or checking for all the elements. And if there is a selected elements, design will be performed for only the selected elements. So we can check that um, after I change the levers, they are I reduce the number of levers and I change the dimension of the lever. So they are turned into LED, which means that those section is NG. We can check the ratio. 
also in the graphing reports you can check it. So in this case the member is not verified as per the code so we need to increase the rebar again. So from this procedure you can freely change your desired rebars. Then you can check verify those sections. In order to check the ductility ratio, uh, I will perform the ductile design, I mean the capacity design. If you see this menu, here is two different menus as well. Uh, not only the design and checking. Here is one more thing. I see strong column within design. Uh, as I explained earlier, we are performing a strong column within design now. So in this case, this ductile design and concrete coat design is exactly the same. So it will give the same results. Just the different thing is when we perform ductile design, the program will automatically perform design for both beam and column at once. But in case of this menu, concrete coat design, the beam design, column design needs to be done separately. So we need, need, need to click twice. Only that is different but the results will be the same. Okay, then we will check the strong column with beam ratio. So program will give you the ratio for each joint. So we can check the ratio. Uh, as per the codes, the 1.3 is acceptance limit. So, if there is any joints which do not um, satisfy this limit, we can only display those um, joints. In this case, since there is no those joints, we can see all the joints satisfy that acceptance limit. Also. The ratio can be checked in the table as well. So based on the this ratio is the ratio between the column strength and beam strength. So uh, as I explained earlier, the column's failure should be done after the beam's failure. So for that, the, we need to check the ratio for the strong column with beam. So that that can be checked in the program. Okay, uh, this is the main part for the RC design feature. If you have any question, uh, you can let me know now. If you do not have question, uh, let's have five minutes break and then we will continue with the pushover analysis and boundary nonlinear analysis for time history analysis.
Uh, our start after five minutes. Thank you.
okay and also similarly for the T set Uh, as you can see in this uh, equation, the isolator's force will be calculated for the restoring force in this term and also summation with the friction force, so friction coefficients and uh, This radius will be specified in these parameters. Okay. Then we will uh, generate the general linkers by clicking two points. Uh, when we generate links, we can also copy those links as well. Clicking two points, the links can be generated for the other part as well. So general link, uh, that friction isolator has been generated here. Then the assign the support at the bottom. is training the audio f for its translation and rotation then we will enter the mass data Firstly, for the mass data, we can consider the self-weight into mass using this option, uh, as we've done previously. And also, use we can use the load to mass function model mass load to mass for the that load. Okay. Now we will uh, enter the time history loads data. For the time history, we can also use the this task pane. This time, uh, we will generate the time history function. For the lamp, we can directly enter the values here. So we can check the graphs directly. OK. 
okay and also generate the earthquake data using our database we will use the SNTRO okay okay and also SNTRO okay so time is true function has been entered and then we will enter the time history roads case For the boundary nonlinear analysis, uh, we need to specify the analysis type as nonlinear and analysis method will be modal. And specify the end time as 60 seconds. And time incremental will be Then specify the damping ratio. Okay. And also We need to enter the eigenvalue analysis control. We can specify between two options, eigenvectors or list vectors. Using list vector, uh, we can select the main load case, I mean the main direction of the loads, which will be dominate the mode shape. So, Using this option, we can reduce the analysis time. Then uh, we will enter the ground acceleration data for the X direction and Y direction. And specify the arrival time. And using the time bearing static loads we can consider the stating load as the time history load for this we will consider the dead and life load uh, as we've done previously we has generated lamp which means the this dead and life load will be applied up to 24 seconds. So they will be applied first, then time history load will be started from the 5 seconds. Since uh, I assigned the time history load, arrival time is 5 seconds. 
So enter the dead loads with the arrival time as zero. And also for the live loads with the scale factor. Okay. Since uh, we need to have the story response of the time history results, uh, I stopped the previous uh, analysis. I checked on that option and reperformed the analysis. Okay, analysis has been done and we will check the results now. Firstly, uh, let's check the story draft. If we go to the results table, we can check the story re related data. And we will check the story draft for time history analysis. Okay, so in this table, uh, we can check the story draft. And let's check the deformation. With the analysis, uh, animation. Also, uh, here is time history results related data, and we can check the behavior of the structure as well. So you can see the behavior of the structure considering the isolators. We can check the progress based on our entered time history function and according to this we can check the behaviors. Okay. 
After we perform the time history analysis, we can check the results with the graphs and text. Firstly, uh, we will make the time history graphs for the isolator. Firstly, we need to specify the graphs. So we will use the general link number 6 and we will check the shear hysteretic graphs. Okay. And So using this specified one, the program will give you the history graphs for the specific isolator. Also those results can be checked in the text output as well. If you go to time history text, General link results first and specify the output time and link select the link and apply. Then program will give you the detailed results for the corresponding general link. So you can see the values for each step. And also we can compare the time history graphs uh, for the first story nodes and also for the top story nodes in order to check the behavior, the difference between two nodes. So go to the graphs again and this time we will check the displacement, specify the node number as one for the first story nodes. And we will check the DX. Okay, and also for the node number 4, which is this node, and we are comparing it with this first storage node. So, node 4, okay. So this time we will compare the displacement between two according to the time. Then we can see the this green line represents the first stories and this red line represents the displacement for the third story. So we can check due to the isolator there is no big uh, difference. And also those data can be checked with the frequent domain as well. By right-clicking, we can freely change between the time domain or frequent domain. Okay. Mm. 
this is the uh, main part for the boundary nonlinear analysis procedure. Uh, if you have any question, please let me know. Okay, uh, for your question, the, uh, for the file foundation, uh, we cannot perform the dynamic analysis. So, uh, in that case, uh, we can specify the source spring using our point spring support. If you go to the boundary and Point spring supports with the nonlinear type. You can specify the stiffness of the soil, and then we can perform the static analysis, not the dynamic analysis. Uh, also, uh, as I've done during the presentation, we uh, selected the nonlinear model analysis. And for if we want to perform the inelastic time history analysis, you can perform them as well. And if we want to see, if we want to check detailed procedure for that, we can have another session for inelastic. Nonlinear time history analysis. Okay. Mm. If we do not have any further question, uh, I want to finish this training session. And if you have any question later, you can uh, send us email via e-support at my.site.com. To this email, uh, we can check your questions and then we will answer you uh, as soon as possible. Thank you very much for your time today and I will finish the session now. Thank you for, for your attention.